Yes, this is Dan Witham here, uh, coming to you, and I'm going to do a study. We're do, we'll do a study here on Martin Luther and baptism, and we'll see what Martin Luther taught about baptism in his large catechism. Uh, it's also in his small catechism, but we don't really have time to go into that one right now. So first off, um, most people believe, you know, most fundamental Baptists, oh, Martin Luther, great man and everything, and um, so forth, great teacher, great preacher, and this and that, and um, did a great, great things for God and all these things. But we'll see in, in uh, the large catechism here what he actually taught. These are his actual words. I went on to a Lutheran website and got the catechism that they have preserved in their website here. And uh, the large catechism number um, 28, and this is of the large catechism part 4 of baptism. And we'll start number 28, which he says here. But as our would-be wise new spirits assert that faith alone saves and that works and external things avail nothing. We answer, it is true. Okay. Indeed, that nothing in us of any avail but faith as we shall hear still further. All right. So he agrees that there is by faith, right? But then he says right here in number 29, but these blind guides. So he's just agreeing with them, but then he says they're blind guides that say it's by faith alone. And most people believe that, Luther believed that, uh, and taught that it was by faith alone, but we'll see what it really taught. But these blind guides are unwilling to see this. Namely that Faith must have something which it believes. That is, of which it takes hold, and upon which it stands and rests. Thus faith clings to the water. Talking about baptism, of course. Thus faith clings to the water and believes that it is baptism in which there is pure salvation and life not through the water, as we have sufficiently stated, but through the fact that it is embodied in the word and institution of God and the name of God and here is in it. So, but he's just saying here, look, it's baptism. But he explains different things because if you if you're believe, because he says that right here, the, uh, the faith clings to the water and believes that it is baptism in which there is pure salvation in life. But he's very confused on this subject where he's, or whatever, he believes the wrong way, I should say, or believes that way anyways. And so basically, um, he teaches that it's the Word of God combining with baptism or something weird. It doesn't even make any sense. And that there will save you. I mean, what in the world is he saying? But anyways, in number um, 31, uh, we'll go down to that here, and it says, Now here we have the words, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Alright, now he doesn't show the last part of that verse. And he goes on, to what else do they refer then to baptism? That is, to the water comprehended in God's ordinance. Hence, it follows that whoever rejects baptism rejects the word of God. Faith in Christ, who directs us thither and binds us to baptism. So, he said, it, it's just... He's all messed up. He's wet here on this subject. And so what else do they refer that then to baptism? Well, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. 
It doesn't say that he that believeth not and is not baptized shall be damned. And if you can get one verse or a couple verses on, on a subject and you say, well, you know, and you try to prove your point, but when there's hundreds of other scriptures that teach by faith alone and believing in Jesus Christ and so forth, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life, John 6:47. Uh, Jesus said in verse 37 there uh, also that if you come to him, I will no wise cast you out. He that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. So there's tons and tons of verses that state that it's by faith alone and by, by trusting in Christ as, uh, uh, as Savior uh, and in what he's done for you on the cross and so forth and his burial and resurrection. Uh, so his shedding of blood and all his works that he did there uh, through his death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But anyways, and, and then um, in number 36 here, so in number 36 of the catechism, the large catechism, near the end of this statement in this, this number here, uh, but it becomes beneficial to you if you have your yourself baptized with a thought that this is according to God's command and ordinance, and besides in God's name, in order that you may receive in the water and prom the promised salvation. I mean, in order that you may receive in the water, in the water, the promised salvation. You get the promised salvation because you're, you receive whatever in the water. I don't know, I mean... So now this, the first, cannot do, nor the body, but the heart must believe it. So, you know, you believe, and you're baptized, and you're saved. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what he taught. So then um, in number 40, or we're, in, we're in number 41, we go down to number 41, and he goes further into his teaching of baptism and so forth, and he has a big section on baptism and infant baptism. But, therefore, every Christian has enough in baptism to learn and practice all his life. For he has always enough to do to believe firmly what it promises and brings. Okay, what does baptism bring? This is what he thinks it brings. Victory over death and the devil, forgiveness of sin, the grace of God, the entire Christ, and the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost with his gifts. So you receive all these things if you're baptized. <laughs> you receive all these things. Uh, you know, you, you receive um, overcoming the devil and so forth. And uh, over death, um, you get forgiveness of your sin, your sins. You get the grace of God. You get the entire Christ, which I'm not sure what that means. I mean, if you get Christ, you get his entirety by faith not through baptism. Um, and also the gifts of the Holy Ghost and so forth. Now, that clearly states in those sections uh, of number 28, number 29, also 31, 32, number 36, and the last one we saw was number 41 of the large catechism on the section of baptism. Okay, so that's what Luther taught. And um, so we'll go on also what he taught for infant baptism in the large catechism here. Now, infant baptism, we're just touch on this here. In, in number 49, he says, Then answer thus, that the baptism of infants is pleasing to Christ. So I believe uh, baptizing infants, God is pleased by doing so. A uh, pleasing to Christ is sufficiently proved from his own work, namely that God sanctifies many of them who have been thus baptized and has given them the Holy Ghost, and that there are yet many, even today, in whom we perceive that they have the Holy Ghost, because, both because of their doctrine and life. So he's teaching here in number 49, in the beginning of the statement here, that a baptism of infants is pleasing to Christ. Okay? It's sufficiently proved from his own work. I mean, 
Where did he come up with the stuff? Uh, obviously, he got it from the Catholic Church, and he never completely got out of there because, I mean, as we see in for baptism, I mean, um, so, and then also in number 52 of Infant Baptism, Large Catechism, starting it says, Further we say that we are not so much concerned to know whether the person baptized believes or not. So he's not concerned whether the person baptized has faith and believes uh, or not. It doesn't matter to him. And then he goes on and says, For, for on that account, baptism does not, does not become invalid. So it doesn't matter whether you're baptized if you don't believe or you do believe, according to Martin Luther. And that's heresy. That's garbage. I mean, you have to believe on Christ, and whether you're baptized or not, if you believe on Christ, you're going to heaven because you have the blood of Christ that forgives you of all your sins, and so forth. So, he says, uh, whether they believe or not or so, that this account baptism, uh, that account, baptism does not become invalid. So it doesn't make a difference whether they believe or not. But everything depends upon the word and the command and command of God. Everything depends on the word, okay, and the command of God. Now, God commands us to be baptized. It is a commandment. But according to the Bible, we can't go to heaven through our through the command keeping the commands of God. That would be worse. This now is perhaps and. Um, that's what we end it with, with the catechism there. So, we see in Martin Luther taught baptism, gives forgiveness of sins, washes your sins away, and so forth, and other things. He believed just weird stuff, and believed we were, it was heresy, or um, they were blind guides that believed in faith alone, and that, that they didn't know what they were talking about. And what we see here in the Bible, um, in 1 Corinthians, I'll turn there, and... 1 Corinthians tells us uh, when, about when Paul here was speaking to the Corinthians, uh, right, God writing through him, and it says here in verse 14, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. I mean, why would, why would Paul be like, well, I thank God I've never, I, I didn't baptize any of you guys, except a couple of you guys. Because he's like, I thank God I didn't do that. I mean, why would he do that if it was so? If it was in the way to heaven, if baptism was the way to heaven, and, and he goes on further in verse 16, and I baptized also the household of Stephanus. And get this here, he baptized the household of Stephanus. And besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. You know, he doesn't even know whether he baptized any other. He says. And 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize. That wasn't the command of God was for him to go and, and, and baptize people. It was, he says, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. All right? So Paul's saying, for Christ sent me not to baptize. Christ sent me to go preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. How Christ came down here to save sinners. How Christ, he, um, I came, he came unto his own and his own received him not. And so forth. He came unto his own and everything and they didn't even receive him. But the Bible says that Christ came for one reason. And that's to save sinners. Of whom I am chief, like Paul said. So, uh, and then we see also in Romans uh, 3 verse 20 telling us here, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be just, justified in his sight. But, uh, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. We see in the Bible that the law of God, or the commands of God, right? I mean, if, if the laws of God is God's commands. And we can't, no, no, you can't be justified in God's sight by the law. Or by, uh, because that the Bible, the commands of God shows us that we're sinners. Uh, by the law is the knowledge of sin. So we're, we know we're sinners by God's words. And the law, the commands of God, are, we, is not gonna, we're not going to be able to be forgiven. And God specifically, 
Jesus Christ specifically commands us to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's the commandment. And Martin Luther was saying those things that, well, it's, it's connected with the Word of God. You have to have the Word of God with the, with the water, and that there will, will, those two together will bring, bring salvation. Well, baptism water is just, it's, it's a picture of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. When Christ was baptized, he was, he was um, baptized and it was, a, it was showing that he was going to die and so forth and rise again. I believe that's what that specifies, uh, of, of when he was baptized, what that, that would be a picture of. And it's the same with us. We look back and so forth, um, baptized, because we're, we're, we're baptized in Christ and um, picturing him on the, on the cross and so forth in his burial and resurrection. That's baptism. Now, the last verse in Titus, uh, Titus 3, 5, uh, also says, let's see here, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So we see in the Bible here, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Now, obviously, that's a work of righteousness to be baptized, because God, God commands it. And if it's, so that would be our own works going to... But he's saying that also he says that um, the water is divine, a divine water, Martin Luther said, um, in number 14 of... Uh, the baptism section there in the large catechism. I mean, no, the water is just water, and we're doing it because of the fact that we look back to the cross. And I already went over that, so we're not doing it because of we're washing away our sins through the water. I just met a man out door knocking the other week, and he said he was taught from six years old. Um that you had to be baptized to be saved. And he never come out of that, and he believed that. He said, it's, it washes away your sins. Baptism. Well, I'm sorry, if you believe that, well, if you believe that, I'm really sorry, because the Bible says, if you believe that, you're damned. I told him, I said, if you're not coming through Christ and his works, and you're coming through both Jesus' works and your own works, which is baptism, or wherever it might be, going to uh, church membership, or wherever it might be, then you're not going to go to heaven. You're, you're going to, you know, there's damnation for those who don't believe in uh, the true gospel. So, you know, if you've got uh, another gospel that's like Martin Luther taught, um, baptism and so forth, and uh, pl plenty of other false prophets are teaching these things, and we see these things from the Word of God, it's not true. And uh, that will do it there. I just wanted to bring that out. At some point I'll get into the small catechism, but there.